You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Harump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Hello and welcome to this edition of News 25. I'm Yunette Gentry. It is Thursday, November 9th. In today's top story, earlier today a two-vehicle crash occurs near Pahrump Valley Boulevard and Mount Charleston Drive. KPVM News 25's Anthony Roberts has this story. Jason Ernest of Mount West Lawyers. Don't be bullied by insurance companies. Call me, 775-727-9500. A two-vehicle crash occurred at 2 p.m. today at the intersection on Pahrump Valley Boulevard and Mount Charleston Drive. It was reported that a maroon Toyota 4Runner was attempting to make a left-hand turn from Pahrump Valley onto Mount Charleston when the vehicle was rear-ended by a red Toyota Corolla, which was heading north on Pahrump Valley. Both drivers were transported to Desert View Hospital. Each vehicle received moderate to major damage. Pahrump Valley was closed to traffic in both directions during the investigation and cleanup. Nye County Sheriff's Office as well as prompt fire and rescue were at the scene. There's another two-vehicle crash to tell you about this one on late Wednesday, unfortunately sending everyone involved to the hospital. News 25 reporter David Preston has those details. Jason Ernest of Mount West Lawyers. Don't be bullied by insurance companies. Call me, 775-727-9500. A two-vehicle crash happened late Wednesday on Calvada Boulevard at Red Rock. According to officers, a Ford Crown Victoria crashed into a Chevrolet Silverado truck. Both vehicles are of the same color. The driver of the Ford is pregnant and was airlifted to Las Vegas trauma. Her passenger, along with the driver of the Silverado and its passengers, were all transported to Desert View Hospital for treatment. The Silverado had four people inside the vehicle, a man, woman, and two children. According to the report, the Ford Crown Victoria was traveling at high speeds northbound on Red Rock when the driver failed to stop at the stop sign and crashed into the Silverado truck that was traveling eastbound on Calvada Boulevard. Both vehicles suffered major damage. Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue, along with Nye County Sheriff's Office, arrived on the scene. When the two-vehicle crash occurred, the Ford ended up in a neighbor's yard while wrapping her car around the neighbor's wire fence. The crash occurred at approximately 4.20 p.m. on Wednesday. Traffic was directed away from the crash site. In other local news, this week's Wanted Wednesday celebrity suspect is Michael Breuer. He's a white male, six feet tall, 275 pounds, and his warrants include drugs and multiple traffic warrants. Anyone with info on where Breuer can be located should call the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775 751 7,000, or you can call Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555, and there might be a cash award available. And a Pahrump man is arrested recently after reportedly threatening to kill his partner in the desert. RJ Camacho has this story. On November 7th, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to Intermountain Healthcare's Urgent Care Department in reference to a report of a physical domestic. Upon arrival, officers made contact with the alleged victim who claimed to have been beaten by William Bergen. Officers stated that while speaking with the alleged victim, officers observed dried blood on the chest area, swelling and redness on the right side of their face, and bruising and abrasions to her chin area. They were also noted to have broken glasses that they were wearing, and that it allegedly occurred when when Bergen had punched her in the face. According to the declaration of arrest, the victim was allegedly punched four to five times in the face while parked in front of AutoZone. She was attempting to get out of the vehicle, however Bergen allegedly would not let her and threatened to take her out into the desert and kill her. When the alleged victim attempted to exit the vehicle, she allegedly fell onto the front passenger floorboard, according to the declaration of arrest, with her legs hanging out of the car. William then allegedly drove her to another location where he continued to strike her. On 
November 5th, the reporting party was stated to have had a baby and had sutures placed. She stated to Bergen that she felt her sutures burst open, and according to the declaration of arrest, Bergen then drove her erratically to urgent care while she was seated on the passenger floorboard with her legs hanging out. The alleged victim then stated that she was thrown out of the vehicle onto the parking lot floor, according to the arrest report. Officers then spoke to two eyewitnesses, one of which was coming out of Fitness for 10, which is across the street from Intermountain Healthcare. The witness had stated that they had seen a vehicle speeding into Intermountain's parking lot, then allegedly saw Bergen exit the vehicle and pull the alleged victim out of the car, leaving her on the parking lot before speeding off. The second witness was an employee at Intermountain who was sitting in her car during her lunch break when she allegedly saw a car speed into the parking lot with its passenger door open. She stated to officers that she observed a male get out of the car and that allegedly began yelling and screaming at the female to get out of the car. The male then allegedly grabbed the female's dog and her other belongings out of the car before speeding off. The alleged victim then told the witness that she was having breathing problems and security and other staff members were notified to help her. Officers then conducted a traffic stop on a gray Kia that was reported to have been the vehicle Bergen was driving in. Officers then confirmed it was Bergen driving the vehicle and promptly arrested him. William Bergen was booked into the Nye County Detention Center under the charges of domestic battery and first-degree kidnapping. Turning now to international news, Israel is now formally allowing four-hour periods daily to allow citizens to evacuate combat areas. Meanwhile, humanitarian aid is coming forth for the citizens of Gaza from around the world. Starting today on November 9th, Israel will be putting in place four-hour daily humanitarian pauses during ground assaults, according to the White House. Even though there have been short-term pauses throughout the last several days, today's announcement is meant to formalize the process and expand upon it. President Joe Biden spoke on the matter and stated that currently it's not possible for a formal ceasefire, and he continued stating that it has taken a little longer than he had hoped for Israel to agree to the humanitarian pauses. He had also asked for a three-day pause in order to allow negotiations to occur for the release of some of the hostages being held by Hamas. According to Israeli officials, there is an estimate of 239 hostages still being held captive by militants. U.S. officials believe that less than 10 Americans are among the hostages. According to National Security Council spokesman John Kirby, Israel will be announcing each four-hour window at least three hours in advance. They will also be opening a second corridor meant for civilians to use to flee areas that are the focus of the military campaign. Kirby also went on to state that the U.S. has continued to have active discussions regarding the release of the hostages. Talks were reportedly taking place in Qatar regarding a larger release of hostages. CIA Director William Burns was in Doha, Qatar today, in order to speak with the Qatari Prime Minister and the head of Israel's Mossad intelligence agency. However, the U.S. has stated that Burns is not playing a lead role in the negotiations. John Kirby stated that, We know they have lines of communication with Hamas that we don't, and we're going to continue to work with them and regional partners to try to secure the release of all the hostages. Meanwhile, humanitarian aid is increasing from different nations across the world for the Gaza citizens. Saudi Arabia announced that they sent out a cargo plane loaded with 35 tons of food and humanitarian aid to Egypt to be delivered to the Gaza Strip. Denmark is supporting humanitarian causes as well by increasing its humanitarian aid to Gaza by 75 million corner, or 10.7 million in U.S. dollars. The aid is reported to be channeled via U.N. agencies and the International Red Cross. French President Emmanuel Macron is also appealing Israel to protect the civilians in Gaza. During a press conference held earlier today in Paris, he stated that all lives have equal worth and said that one cannot fight terrorism without rules and that protecting civilians is not negotiable. Officials from both Western and Arab nations, the United Nations, and non-governmental organizations were meeting in Paris today to discuss providing aid to civilians in Gaza. However, according to Macron's office, Israeli authorities did not participate. And Thanksgiving is just around the corner, so we're telling you what the Holiday Task Force is up to after this break. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by Harumps United Rentals. From home to job site, they have all your equipment needs. Call 775-990-4260.
Welcome back to News 25. Well, it's almost turkey season, so the Pahrump Holiday Task Force is putting together its annual Thanksgiving dinner. That's why News 25 is speaking with Linda Wright, who's telling us more. Hi, I'm Linda Wright, and I'm from the Pahrump Holiday Task Force, and I'm here to invite you to the Pahrump Holiday Task Force Community Thanksgiving Dinner, which will be on Thanksgiving Day, November 23rd, at the Nye Communities Coalition at 1020 East Wilson, behind Walmart, uh, from 11 to 2. So come on down. We'll be having a traditional Thanksgiving dinner, turkey with all the trimmings. So come on down and have a great day. Thank you. Veterans Day is this Saturday. And so we're speaking with Dr. Tom Waters about the various Veterans Day events going on throughout the weekend. Hi, I'm Tom Waters. I just want to tell you about Veterans Day. Veterans Day is coming up on November 11th, always on November 11th. And for Veterans Day at the VFW Post on Homestead, the program always starts at 11 o'clock. And this is because the World War I ended 11-11-11, November 11th at 11 a.m. And that's what we use for Veterans Day. And that's why it's honored. And we have the ceremony always on November 11th. I, also, we have the uh, Disabled American Veterans who also have a program coming up. And it'll be at 3 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial. That's at the Chief Tacopa Cemetery. And it starts at 3 o'clock. The, uh, the other thing you definitely don't want to miss in that ceremony is the fact that the Silver Tappers will also participate. We have so many people that are participating in both of these ceremonies. We encourage everyone to come out and look at the ceremony, understand what it's all about. It's to say, thank you veterans for your service. Thank you for protecting our country and thank you for being who you are. So come out and have a ceremony with us and understand what Veterans Day is all about. Thank you. And we thank all veterans for their service. And while you're celebrating this holiday weekend, Mikey Ruhan has a weekend road trip tip for you. Looking to get away this weekend? Just about an hour away, right outside of Shoshone, California, Dublin Gulch, a unique collection of old miners' homes constructed into the solidified volcanic ash just outside the town of Shoshone, California. The exact years these homes were built has been lost in history, though it is believed that miners lived in them during a local silver boom. After the miners left, others moved in and continued to occupy the homes. By the 1970s, the homes were largely abandoned. It's possible to reach Dublin Gulch by car or on foot as it lies a quarter mile up the road besides the Shoshone Cemetery. There is plenty of parking for walkers on the whole wide pullout of Highway 127, immediately south of the town post office. Cars that make the drive up to the homes can park at small gravel parking areas. Homes were built into rock, with some containing fireplaces, chimneys that come out of the top of the stone, multiple rooms, and even garages. It's not possible to enter the Dublin Gulch Cave houses. However, with a good flashlight, Visitors are able to get a good view inside the screen windows. There's little shade at Dublin Gulch, but you can stop by the shops and Shoshone visitors to Dublin Gulch to get more information from the nearby Shoshone Museum. Samantha Harris from Valley Electric Association is talking about the history between Pahrump and Valley Electric's co-op. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Valley Electric and its family of companies focused on serving our members. We're better together. All electric co-ops were created out of necessity. They were created to meet a need that would have otherwise been unmet in the community. 
Back in the day, our community didn't have electricity, even though cities did because it wasn't profitable to bring electricity out to farmers in rural areas. So a group of neighbors banded together and organized our electric co-op so everyone in the community could benefit. They worked together for the benefit of the whole community. These four early power companies, Amargosa Valley Electric Cooperative, Beatty Utility Company, Pahrump Utility Company, and White Mountain Electric Cooperative were consolidated in 1965 to form Valley Electric Association Inc. While this history may be forgotten, key parts of that heritage remains, focusing on serving the greater good with a spirit of innovation and self-help. The innovation piece is a key driver for our cooperative. Since bringing electricity to our town decades ago, we've continued to adapt to the world around us and to the needs of our members and communities. These mission-oriented roots mean our co-op is always looking for the next way to meet the needs of the community. For example, we do this through Operation Roundup, Fill the Bucket, serving our members with volunteer hours and local partnerships with schools and businesses. All co-ops are constantly striving to anticipate and plan for the future needs of their members and the community. We remain mission focused on providing an essential service in the community to help it thrive. Our focus is not on making excess revenue and profits. It's on meeting the needs of our members and the community we serve. All co-ops adhere to the seven guiding principles that reflect core values of honesty, transparency, equity, inclusiveness, and service to the greater community good. The seven cooperative principles are voluntary membership, democratic control, member economic participation, autonomy and independence, education, training and information, cooperation among cooperatives, and lastly, concern for community. We are not just a utility, we are a co-op. We don't have customers, we have members. Don't grab that remote, News 25 will be right back with much more local and national news. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back. In today's Rescue a Pet segment, Christy Sigmund is showing us the beautiful and adorable Sammy. Today's Rescue a Pet segment is brought to you by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. So this is Sammy. Sammy is located at Never Forgotten Animal Society. He is a little under a year old, and I tell you what, he is just an absolute joy. He loves to play, he loves to walk, he loves to run, he just, he loves love. He is, is a fabulous dog and would make a wonderful addition to any home. He is good with children, he is good with older adults, he is good with dogs. I don't know about cats, but I think he'll get along with anybody and everything. So that is just Sammy, and that is just who he is, and he's a love. So this is Sammy, S-A-M-M-Y. We are located at 3091 North David. That is the corner of Bel, Bel Vista and David. Our phone number is 775-537-8674. Sammy is a cutie, and if any of you out there have a backyard he can run in, this story is for you as well, because these cooler temperatures are making fall the perfect time to redo any of your landscaping. So we're speaking with home experts at Angie who are walking us through how to update your outdoor spaces. Refreshing your landscaping is an easy project that can make a big impact. In today's Ask Angie segment, Mallory Mikatesh shows us the ins and outs of taking on a landscaping project. 
Most people will need to refresh their landscaping once every few years. As a homeowner, there are a few telltale things you can look out for to know if now is the right time to invest in this refresh. Look for things like dry or patchy grass, uh, dead bushes, and even pavers that might be broken. Those are all telltale signals. Fall weather is cool, but free of snow and ice, making it the perfect time of year to take on landscaping projects. If you refresh your landscaping now, your plants will have time to settle in before winter comes around. I recommend bringing in an experienced pro to help you with this project. A great place to start is with some of the things that are of immediate concern, like replanting dead bushes and taking care of those patches of dead grass. If you're tight on budget, there are some things in your lawn that you can DIY. Consider DIYing low-risk projects to save money. This includes things like fertilizing your lawn, shaping shrubs, and adding new flowers to your garden. And one of the best ways that you can ensure that your yard will look good for years to come is by coming up with a maintenance plan. It's things like making sure you know when to water your plants and how often, and what needs to be planted at what time of year. Doing a little work now to plan will save your yard in the future. Do you have questions about your home projects? Tweet them using hashtag AskingAngie. That's hashtag A-S-K-I-N-G-A-N-G-I. -N -G -I, and you may get some tips in an upcoming segment. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Let's take a look outside through our Learner and Row weather cam this afternoon. Beautiful blue skies, not too hot, not too cool. It's a wonderful November temperature, and we'll take a closer look for you in weather after the break. News 25 weather is brought to you by... Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. Shalom. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios, all up and down the Ace Country Radio Network, and your computer and mobile device any old time you want. There's eight channels of big digital entertainment, www.kpvm. Dot TV. Let's check out this weather map. It's majestic. Fernley, Fallon, and Carson City all checking in at 51. Weather triplets at the top of the map, and all of them Cool Spot Award winners. Congratulations. Split the glory. That's not too bad. Tonopah knows that feeling at 53 degrees. 52 out there in Goldfield. Beatty up to 64. The donkey started sweating. They said, well, that's enough. That's all we got for you. 67 out in Amargosa makes them the hot spot, and 66 degrees in Las Vegas makes them uh, number two. Out in Death Valley at 77 degrees, and here in the paradise of Pahrump, well, let's take a look. Current temperature, 61 degrees, not too bad. 60 wonderful degrees. Our high today of 66 felt real good. That wind was nothing at 3 miles per hour out of the east. The sun rose at 614, set this evening at 440, and uh, we're plunged into the darkness. You might still see just a hint of that gorgeous sunset under those partly cloudy skies. We're heading down a low night of 36 degrees. Almost feels like it could be snow, but I don't think it is. No, nah, it's not. Let's take a look at tomorrow. Uh, yeah, mostly, again, I'm kind of cloudy today. Tomorrow, 65. Temperature's starting to rocket up on the weekend a little bit. I mean, it's a, it's a short rocket. Sunshine and uh, up to 73 degrees by Monday. Not too bad. Wind's starting to kick up and uh, kick out some of the warmth and bringing in some moisture. Looks like Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, possibility of rain, sprinkles, a little fall day action. We'll feel like some like we're living somewhere else almost. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that and see what, uh, we see, see what develops. Let you know. Back to the desk, here's your net. Thanks so much, John. And we'll take upper 60s to lower 70s. Still a mild November so far. We'll take it. All right, that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Unet Gentry. And from all of us here at KPVM and A's Country Radio, thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the air next newscast. Good night.